Uh, but Professor Takashi asked me to uh, prepare some topic which uh, would be a good representative of my thinking for an in intensive discussion. And I chose to talk about the concept of justice. Okay, how can I move to the next one? Okay. Uh, so, uh, if we go back to the time of Plato, justice was the paramount virtue, or the sum of virtue in one's relations with others. So, according to Plato, justice does not depend on external forces, but is the right condition of the human soul by the very nature of man when seen in the fullness of his environment. This is a very old view of justice. What we have a lot more recently, especially from Rawls, which is the most famous person uh, having a book on justice, is that justice is the first virtue of social institutions. So the concept of justice would be applied only in organizational relations between people, not a human virtue by itself. So my presentation is actually opposite to the Rawls view of justice. So today the situation is that goodness or morality is considered usually separate from justice. And uh, being bad or immoral is also considered separate from being, you know, unjust. They are considered separate issues. So what I will do today is to first work on the concept of justice, to refer to four layers of justice, and the next uh, part of the discussion will be about what is the position of justice in the world? Do we live in a just world or not? And especially because I'm familiar with the views of Islam and since coming to Japan, Buddhism, I will specially consider these two views of justice and also explain what I think about that. So, the first level of justice is to see justice as fairness. This is the most common way. Usually lawyers talk about justice in this form. One is treated fairly when others are treated the same for committing the same act. This is also how Aristotle thought of justice. One must treat similar cases alike, except when there is a relevant difference. But I think this layer is not enough. Lawyers may like this, but I don't think this is the case. What if we are using the same law to everyone, but that law is unjust? That is not justice. So we move on to the second layer. In the second layer, we want to take care of that issue. This layer, we call it equality. We think if everybody, you know, if you follow the golden rule of ethics, do to others what you would want them to do to you, we can kind of take care of that problem. We wouldn't want an unjust rule be applied to us, too. So this is the layer that we think laws should also be just, not just having them be applied similarly to everyone. Then we go move on to the third level. The third level of justice is what is called desert. Not everybody deserves the same thing. So you, you may be very talented to become a medical doctor, but if the system says, no, everybody deserves to go to medical school if he wants to. Everybody deserves the same thing. No, there is a diversity. If we, if we consider that the fact that people should not be treated blindly, you know, the same, but they may have uh, special talents, special conditions, which deserves special look at them. So this level facilitates self-actualization of everyone based on diversity and desert. But then there is another level. And this makes justice uh, the, the paramount virtue I was talking about first. At the fourth level, justice is not served when the moral rights of a person are violated. This is from John Stuart Mill. So this level elevates the concept of justice to the assurance of ethical principles. So autonomy, not harming, making sure everybody benefits, and so many things can be included in the concept of justice. At this level, you, you consider justice to be what assures you 
to get your moral rights. All you have your rights. So this this was my view of justice. And if we look at justice in, in, in these four layers, what is the position of justice in the world? Empirical studies show that we do not live in a just world. Look at uh, genetic differences. A child dies in less than a year. Look at natural disasters, earthquakes that happen. Uh, so many people who die, who are bombed. We don't live in a just world. To think that we live in a just world is an illusion. According to social psychologists, interestingly, a lot of people suffer from this illusion that the world is fair and justice prevails. And the, this is called in psychology the just world hypothesis, which is an illusion to help people make sense of senseless events. Something happens so senseless, and people think there should be a reason for that to happen. The world could not be so senseless. So the result of this one consequence of this illusion is blaming the victim. It is reassuring to think that somebody who was killed in an accident deserved what happened to her. Uh, we had an earthquake in Iran. Some religious clergy said they should have done something bad. Maybe this is because of uh, their special, you know, sect of religion that the earthquake happened to them. The illusion that if an earthquake happens, maybe there was a reason. So what is the Islamic view? <clears throat> of course, I am limited by the Islamic view in my country, Iran. Uh, religions offer a very romanticized view of justice. In Islam, God is considered just, and especially in Shia Islam, the world is also considered a just place where people may suffer for their sins or as a test. So these are some you know, verses from Quran, but what they simply mean is that uh, we live in a just world. If something bad happens to me, maybe this is for a sin I committed, maybe I'm being, you know, you know, I'm being tested, but it was not unjust. So, also, interestingly, Islam may consider this uh, collective justice. When a group of people may receive retribution for their collective conduct. For example, that verse says, indeed God will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. We have heard that a lot also in my country, collective justice. Uh, moreover, like Christianity, there's afterlife, so if there was something that was done unjustly, it would be corrected in the afterlife. What is the Buddhist view? <clears throat> the, the, the problem of injustice in the world is resolved differently in Buddhism. Buddhism and Hinduism, you know, Buddhism took so many ideas from Hinduism, such as karma and re reincarnation. So karma, which is a natural attribute of an action, that rewards or punishes that act and along with reincarnation. So you do bad deeds, you're going to be born again in a lower form. You do good things, so automatically justice prevails. So by coming back to life in a different form in many cycles and receiving the karma of one's action in this life or the next, justice can be preserved. There is no empirical proof for any of these religious claims, not in Islam, not in this view. <clears throat> what I found that is more similar to what I wanted to say, there are some uh, quotes from Bible. Follow justice and justice alone, so that you may live and possess the land. <clears throat> Blessed are those who act justly. So, here we see some very strong recommendations to follow justice because our world is not just. Man, I, I, I want to explain on that. So administer to justice, show mercy and compassion to one another. So what I'm trying to say is that the very fact that we live in a world which is not just makes our pursuit of justice the most human virtue possible. 
so many things in our uh, world has improved, have improved. Autonomy has improved. Uh, less harm, more benefit. But justice has never improved. Still, based on where you live in, based on where you were born in, based on so many other factors, there are so many differences. We don't have equality in this world. Actually, the gap between people from social classes has been increasing. This is actually what I say uh, is, a, is proof for, because we live in, in a world that is not just, our attempts to, to, to bring justice in this world make sense and give sense to morality. If we lived in a just world, morality would be redundant. If you live in a just world, why do you have to be a good person? Things will automatically correct themselves. <clears throat> and uh, I have to answer questions from my students very often. And with young people especially, this is a very common issue. What is the meaning of life? Why do we come to the life? Is, is, this worth, is this life worth living? And also, later, the meaning of death. So this is how I answer these questions. Especially if you look at the view of Buddhism. I have many Buddhist friends that think life is a burden. And uh, I am condemned to come back to life, live it again. No, I think of life as a blessing. I think uh, I have a very positive view of life. And I, I want my students to think of life as in a very positive aspect. So I think of birth coming to life as an expression of love. So this is a very positive, quite different, still a lot of them don't accept it from me. And I, I tried to do a survey, it didn't work. So I, I used the method of economics. Uh, in economics, we consider people to act based on rational thinking. So I, I told them, if somebody comes to you and gives you a hundred dollars, will you reject that? It's rational that you take a hundred dollars. While receiving $100, would you say, what happens if I use all of it? What does it mean? You didn't give me a blank check. You didn't give me $100,000. You just gave me $100. Yeah, that's $100. And you can use it, and when the $100 is used, you won't have anyone, any money. But isn't it rational to take that? Would you say this life is not worth it because it ends? This life is worth it for as much as it is. Just as it is rational to accept a sum of money which is not a blank check. And then it comes to the idea then how, how, it, how, how is it related to justice. Justice again I think makes death make sense. Everyone dies. This is one area that everybody is treated the same. And uh, no matter how brutal, how cruel, no matter if somebody was a king, a queen, Hitler or whoever, everybody dies. We all die. This is one area that helps you make sense of death. That brings justice to at least the minimum level. And I try to explain these to students who appear to have these philosophical questions of, you know, what's the meaning of life and death? It all starts with love, you are blessed, you are from a selected few who were given a chance to live. And you can include love and justice as the most important virtues of humanity, and in the end, everybody dies. That's the importance of <coughs> the concept of justice. So, human societies have been successful in protecting the autonomy, I, I just said that, the benefits of technology reducing the harms of disease and disasters, but achievement of justice has always been far from reality. The reason is quite simple, true justice is a hard way to, to acquire. People like Gandhi are examples of the virtue of justice that starts within a person 
and shines through him to others and to the society. So justice is not just in my relationship with others. Justice starts from inside me, like Plato said, and uh, like I'm arguing for this. To bring justice to the world, we must work hard to develop the virtue of justice as a paramount ethical virtue in every individual. And these are my references, so I had to find uh, quotes from uh, some philosophers, and uh, there were some quotes from religious books like the Quran, and uh, some encyclopedias, and that was all. Thank you very much. If you have questions. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Professor Nadi, for your very nice presentation. Uh, I would like to make some observations before I throw the paper uh, for uh, others. Uh, uh, the concept of justice is quite often compared to or identified with the, the notion of fairness. And uh, very rightly we have started with uh, Plato and then he moved towards uh, Aristotle and then uh, to Rawls. But there is also another way of looking at uh, uh, the concept of justice. For example, if you use uh, Amartya Sen's uh, uh, standpoint, you know, in his famous book, An Idea of Justice, he argues that this has to be seen in the proper pers perspective, thereby denying some of the uh, suggestions offered by um, Rawls, though he was his teacher. Now, uh, actually, Ra um, Amartya Sen tries to see the problem from Indian context, and he shows that that should be the concept of social justice, which has to be the uh, cornerstone of uh, theory of justice. I think that has to be taken into account first. And secondly, I would like to uh, uh, tell you, I mean, you know that, of course, the, the, the religious understanding of justice may not help us in this empirical world. Of course, all religions uh, talk about uh, the concept of justice and they claim that, that the world is uh, full of justice or that is what is called just world. Uh, if I can uh, speak from Indian standpoint or Hindu standpoint, wherein it is argued, and you have also made a reference to that, the concept of karma. Now, a person who is born in a poor family, it is said that it is uh, due to his previous birth. So, there is no uh, equality among a poor man and the rich man. So, the reason that is given or the presupposition that is involved is that because of his previous uh, sins, now, but uh, this cannot solve the problem because no, you are trying to evade the responsibility. You are trying to push uh, this to a metaphysical level, whereby you try to show that uh, this everything is perfect, which is not true. So, I would like to um, submit uh, uh, that uh, the religious mode of understanding the concept of justice uh, will not help us. Uh, but you are referring to Gandhi. Now Gandhi also, I of course we have got very high regard for Gandhi and we are uh, um, we are very happy that you made him answer. But uh, when in 1942 when there was an earthquake, he said people, uh, because of people's sin that it has happened. Now this this cannot be the proper way of understanding uh, uh, the concept of sin. So I think that uh, first, my my first observation is don't try to look at uh, the concept of justice from religious. Uh, uh, perspective. And secondly, uh, if you look at uh, the concept of justice from Indian perspective, I would like to say that you know we are more concerned about the social justice. Though we say that all are equal, all cannot be equal. I think you made a reference to that indirectly in your uh, speech. All cannot be equal because there is a hierarchy among people in the sense uh, that some are privileged, some are able to get a proper education, but whereas some are denied that education. So all cannot be treated equally. So the constitution has to provide some, uh, uh, no, some, um, uh, no, uh, uh, help uh, for those uh, uh, people that who are downtrodden or those who have been uh, rejected or neglected by the society. So I think uh, that the concept of social justice has uh, 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 elaborate uh, understanding of uh, or a broader perspective of justice which includes, of course, there are different ways of approaching justice. One can say social justice, political justice. But uh, I feel that uh, the concept of social justice, where when there is no equality among people, I think that the constitution has to make some suggestions or some uh, amendment to them so that they will be benefited. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
yeah, like uh, the point I was trying to make was that uh, if we look at the concept of justice from all these four different layers, it's not just about social justice. It includes a lot of our moral virtues. And if I have it within me, then it, when it is reflected to my relations with others, it shows itself in the form of, for example, social justice. But I have to have it in me. I have to care about that. And if I don't, it will never happen. And as you said, uh, we live in a very unjust world. And I don't want to, uh, you know, I have a lot of friends who deal with this problem to try to make sense why they are living with misfortune. And I don't want to say, you deserve this. And I don't want to tell them, no, it's a just word. Think what you did wrong. I want to say, you live in a very unjust world. This is the reality. And I want to focus on empirical data, which based on that, you know, these people, because of these religious views, they are suffering. And like people, you know, this earthquake stricken area just happened last week. They're suffering, suffering mentally. Did I do something wrong? Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to my child? Accept the reality. This world is not just. And we have to make it just. This is our job to make it just. And how much effort we make doing that makes us a good person we are or not. If we don't do that, we have to change this. And our apathy, our accepting that, you know, this is the world, everything's okay. If not here, next life, after life, there is no there is no reality. We have to work, work on this war. This is, yeah. this is, of course, my view. And, uh, I, 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 you know, Muslims would not like that. Probably Buddhists would not like that. You know, I've lived in Japan now for like about 18 years. Uh, Buddhism in Japan is very different from Buddhism in India. Buddhism in Japan basically is a business running a temple, <laughs> running a temple, very little. You know, the, the idea of compassion is seen so little. The only, the only true Buddhist I've seen in Japan is Professor Takashi. I, I can tell you this. I've, I was calculating how many years I've been coming here. It's the ninth time. I have come here every, every year. I see a real Buddhist here. He's not here. I, I say that about him. I have seen compassion in him. I haven't seen compassion. I mean, Japanese society is controlled, managed by strict rules. Very little altruism. He's different. But I have been studying Buddhism for so long, and I have students suffering. We have, in our university, you have students who commit suicide. In Korea, it's the same. A lot of people coming, they don't see any meaning in life. And if my view of life is that it's a dark thing. I'm coming here to suffer. It's all suffering. And I'm condemned to live. No, it's a blessing. You have been given that $100 that you could use. So sorry, I, I talk too much. <laughs> no, yeah, please. Well, thank you for your presentation. You're going to bring us to some philosophical thinking, yeah. But uh, the view on uh, suffering of life in Buddhism, I think you probably have a slight uh, difference. That is, if you understand life that is suffering, then you can overcome it. Yes. Had you not accept life as it is, how can you overcome that uh, condition? Okay, that's one thing. And second thing about justice, suppose you are uh, a father, you have a piece of cake, and you have three kids, one grown up, one the middle age and the, the one just newly born. How do you divide the cake justly? Yeah. <laughs> That's so I, w I would ask them how much they would like the, to have the cake. And no, you are the one, the, everybody wants to have the most. <clears throat> Oh, oh, so that maybe that, that, that's how I think differently. I have an answer to that. Divide that cake justly. He who holds the knife should take the last 
I will want, want to go, see your family. <laughs> I, I just want to add one point which uh, he has said. See, the concept of suffering in Buddhism has got a pragmatic uh, way of life. Because you know, most of us, I think, uh, get a wrong understanding of Buddhism. Though they, there are the four noble truths, na, the four uh, satyas, they say, at satya. Now, though the, the first uh, truth uh, is suffering, immediately Lord Buddha says that there is a cause for suffering. Because he says, when the world is full of suffering, even pressure, he says, gives some suffering. So, but uh, there is a way by which you can overcome this. So, I think that it has got a pragmatic uh, approach towards uh, life. In fact, I would say that it is the only uh, philosophy which gives a pragmatic approach to life. Yeah, finding the balance. Yeah, finding the balance. Yeah, but, but I have, the, you know, I, I, have been, I have been practicing Buddhism in a temple in, in my city and I've been doing a lot of interviews with Buddhists and, for example, we had this discussion. So, for example, if I'm not a good person, in the next life I may be born as a cockroach or as a rat. And he was saying that, you know, look at this rat. And I said, do you think this rat thinks about its life the way I look at it? This rat may be enjoying its life. It can be a worm. It still is a living thing. As a worm, it still wants to live. As uh, Darius said, that's what we call love. To want to live. Every living thing wants to live. And I would not say that a cat is at a lower level. Yeah. It, at its level of understanding, mm -hmm. it may be doing just fine. You know, I have these dilemmas, these problems as a human. And by trying to say that in the next life, what's <coughs> going to happen to me on a very, I would, I would say, on an empirical basis, doesn't help me deal with the problems of this life yeah. that I'm living. Why, why should you bother about the world yes. which is something transcendental which you I have not to, experience? There is so much injustice yeah, in this that, world that, that I have correct. to deal with. But before you answer, as a father, how do you answer the question? Yeah. By cake, how do you divide it? I, I just told you, I, I, I have to consider how much they like it, you know? I would try to consider that, what, how much they want, and I want to try to take most of it for me, no. I have the answer. The answer is, uh, you've, because you're the father and you've taught your children justice, you will let the children decide uh, how much they would like. Yeah, exactly. And so it's self-determination. Yeah. Only through expression of self-determination can we build what if the world of justice. What if one of them want it all? Then yeah. uh, they've not been trained well. <laughs> uh, if they were his children, I'm sure they were, they were polite and they will leave for each other and share. Well, yeah. well about uh, the meaning of life, when you talk about the meaning of life, you should bring some of this and, 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 and examine life is not worth living. So when you watch over one's own self, it introspect within oneself, then you can find a meaning in life. Yeah, I think my life is meaningful. Yeah. Really when you talk about your students. Yeah. Any other questions, please? Do you have a question? I mean, you are you just add something to the cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the professor told up here. <laughs> are you bringing cake? I will bring cake. <laughs> now it comes to, well, I'm just taking an application to bionics. Uh, we divide the cake according to me. Ah, right. Yes. Right. If you have five kids, one of them doesn't eat that yeah. much. You don't give equal share, or exactly. else the resource will go to waste. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. You give it to the one who needs it more. You have a good answer. <laughs> better than, better than yeah, rather than uh, give it equally, but the others cannot consume it. The resource will exactly. go to waste. Exactly. They're just wasting a very important yeah. the resource. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You can be a good father. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Next thank you. Thank you. Thank you.